Greetings again everyone, only geniuses solve these equations in under 2 minutes, prove me wrong in the comments. So welcome back again everyone, here we have another algebraic exponential equation that we're gonna solve where we have x squared minus x cubed is equal to 12 and we are given to find the value of x. Now if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please feel free to tap that like button and you can subscribe to my channel to stay in tune for more math videos like these ones. You can also check out my math olympiad playlist to see how to solve similar algebraic exponential equations. Also before we dive into solving this challenge, please feel free to comment a math equation that you would like us to solve. So we start to solve our equation by taking 12 and bring it to the left hand side where it becomes a negative. So now we'll rewrite our equation as x squared minus x cubed minus 12 equals 0. So now we have an equation that seems complex but I guarantee that it will only get easier from here. So from here we simplify our equation further by saying x squared minus x cubed minus and we look at this negative 12 right here. Now negative 12 can be simplified as negative 8 minus 4 as negative 8 minus 4 gives us negative 12. So then of x squared minus x cubed minus 8 minus 4 equals 0. Now what is interesting about negative 8 and negative 4 is that 8 is the same as 2 cubes and 4 is the same as 2 squared. Now this gives us the advantage in solving our equation by grouping like terms together. This means that we can take x squared and we can pair that with negative 2 squared. So we have x squared minus 2 squared. Then we come again and say minus x cubed and we pair x cubed with 2 cubes. So we have x squared minus 2 squared minus x squared minus 2 cubed equals 0. So now we'll be looking at our pairs. So we'll have x squared minus 2 squared and we can also put our pairs in pairs of brackets. And in doing this it means that we can factor negative 1 from x cubed minus 2 cubed. And in factoring out negative 1 in our brackets we'll have x cubed plus 2 cubed. And of course this equation is still equal to 0. Now pay attention to this part as we recall what we learned in algebraic lessons. Here we have the difference of two squares and we have the sum of two cubes. Now the difference of two squares is expanded by saying a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b in one pair of brackets and in the other pair we have a minus b. And for the sum of two cubes where we have a cube plus b cube, this is expanded by having a plus b in one pair of brackets and in the other pair of brackets we would have a squared minus a b plus b squared so now from here we'll be applying these rules into our equation so where we have the difference of two squares we'll say that x plus 2 in one pair of brackets and in the other pair we'll have x minus 2 and then we'll have minus 1 and now for the sum of two cubes we say x plus 2 in one pair of brackets and now in the other pair we will have x squared minus 2x plus 2 squared and of course this equation is still equal to 0. So now from here we can factor like term in this equation. So what we see common is x plus 2. So we factor x plus 2 by saying x plus 2 in one pair of brackets and since we are multiplying x minus 2 we have another pair of brackets with x minus 2 and in factoring our x plus 2 we keep negative 1 and we also keep this trinomial expression. So we'll have x minus 2 minus 1 times in brackets we'll have x squared minus 2x plus we know that 2 squared gives us 4 so we'll have plus 4. And then we'll close our brackets and of course our equation is still equal to 0. So now let's simplify our equation a bit further. So in the first pair of brackets we'll have x plus 2 and in the other pair of brackets we'll have x minus 2. And now from here we distribute negative 1 by saying negative 1 times x squared gives us negative x squared. And then we have negative 1 times negative 2x. We have a negative and a negative gives us a positive. So we'll have plus 2x. And then we continue by distributing negative 1 and positive 4. We know that negative 1 and positive gives us a negative. So we'll have negative 4. And then we close our brackets so we know that this equation is still equal to 0. So now let's see what we have here. So we'll have x plus 2 in one pair of brackets and in the other pair we will simplify this by having negative x squared first. So we'll say negative x squared. 
then we know that we have plus 2x, but 2x plus x is equal to 3x. So we have negative x squared plus 3x. And then we do negative 4 and negative 2, which gives us negative 6. So we have negative x squared plus 3x minus 6. Close our brackets. And of course, this is equal to 0. And now from here, we'll be applying our zero property rule, where it states that if two numbers multiply together to give us 0, either one of them is equal to 0 or both are equal to 0. So here we have x plus 2 is equal to 0 and negative x squared plus 3x minus 6 equals equals zero. This means that we will have multiple solutions for x. So here we subtract two on both sides of this equation. Therefore, we would have x is equal to negative two. And this here is what we call our real solution. Now, let's not forget this real solution as we will be verifying this solution to see if it is true. And now with that, we'll be looking at our quadratic equation. We simplify our quadratic equation by dividing by negative one. This removes the negative from the x squared. Now, in dividing by negative one gives us our additive inverse so we'll have x squared instead of positive 3x we now have negative 3x instead of negative 6 we'll have plus 6 and we have this equals 0. Now from here we'll be solving this equation using our quadratic formula. So looking at our equation here we apply our quadratic formula by first identifying a, b and c where a equals 1, b equals negative 3 and c which is our number term equals positive 6. Now if you like this video so far please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and let's stay connected by subscribing to my channel. Now we solve this quadratic equation by applying our quadratic formula. So let's say that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now since we know the values of a, b and c, we'll be plugging in those values into our quadratic formula respectively. So let's say that x is equal to negative, we know that b is negative 3, so that's minus negative 3 plus or minus the square root of. We know that we'd have b squared here, so we'd have negative 3 and we put that in brackets because we're squaring that. And now we have minus, we know that 4 times a is 1, so we say 4 times 1 and then we know that c is 6, so we say 4 times 1 times 6 all over 2 times a which is 1. So now we have those values plugged in and from here we'll be simplifying the value of x by rewriting that as follows. So we say that x is equal to we know that a negative and a negative gives us positive 3 so we say that x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of we know that negative 3 squared is 9 so we'd have 9 minus 4 times 1 times 6 gives us 24. So we'd say that 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 24 all over 2. So then this leaves us with that x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 24 gives us negative 15. So x is then equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 15 over 2. And in simplifying this a bit further, we say that x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 15 but we'll be factoring out this negative 1 so we'll say that 3 plus or minus the square root of 15 times the square root of negative 1 all over 2. Now we know that the square root of negative 1 is our imaginary number i so we therefore simplify this equation by saying that x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 15 i all over 2. And so this is our solution for x using our quadratic formula. However, this solution as we can see we have the imaginary number i. This solution is therefore referred to as a complex solution. As we have the imaginary number i which is the square root of negative 1 and there are no two numbers that multiply together to give us any negative number. So therefore that solution is complex. But here we have our real solution which we said that x is equal to negative 2. So then from here we'll be verifying our real solution that x is indeed equal to negative 2. So as we say, we'll be verifying our real solution and in verifying our real solution, we'll be rewriting our original equation. So here we have x is equal to negative 2 and so we'll be plugging in this value into our original equation. So let's recall that our original equation states that x squared minus x cubed is equal to 12. And so now where we see x in our equation, we replace it with negative 2. So where we have x squared, we then say negative 2 in brackets squared minus, we see x here again, so we say minus in brackets negative 2 cubed equals 12. So that's negative 2 squared minus negative 2 cubed equals 12. So we'll be squaring and cubing negative 2 and then we will check our expression to see if our solution is true. So we say that negative 2 squared is the same as saying negative 2 times negative 2. We know that a negative and a negative gives us a positive. So negative 2 times negative 2 gives us positive 4. 
And for negative 2 cubes, we have negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. We know that these negatives are going to be cancelled out, leaving just one negative. And here we still have a negative. So we say 4 minus and then we take this negative again. And we know that 2 times 2 times 2 gives us 8. So that's 4 minus negative 8 equals 12. And now let's look at our solution. We know that we have a negative and negative here, which gives us a positive. So we therefore have 4 plus 8. And is that equal to 12? So now we do our addition. So we say 4 plus 8. And we know that 4 plus 8 gives us 12. So there you have it. Our solution is verified. X is indeed equal to negative 2. Now thanks again for staying tuned with me to the end of this video. I hope that this was very informative. Please remember to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel to stay tuned to more math videos like this. Also remember to check out my Math Olympiad or my Complex Solution playlist to see how to solve similar algebraic exponential equation. And until then, I will see you again soon. Thanks again and take care.